Hey all, welcome to module five, uh, advanced call flow features. Let's go ahead and get started. So the agenda, advanced call flow components, conditional routing, looping and timeouts, variables and data actions. So this is where we start getting into more advanced components, really start looking at conditional routing, uh, take a look at different data actions and variables. So this is, this is gonna be good. Also the hands-on exercise is pretty awesome. Uh, we'll really start digging deep into that. So advanced call flow components. Advanced call flow, compo call flow components allow for more sophisticated call routing, handling, and the Genesis Cloud Architect environment. These components can help you implement features such as data management, error handling, time-based routing, obviously much, much more. Uh, by incorporating these advanced components into your call flows, you can create more efficient and adaptable contact center solutions that meet the unique requirements of your organization. So uh, what I have here in the screenshot, data action. Uh, we are getting, in this scenario, we're going to look at if any agents are on queue. Uh, on queue uh, is a little bit different than I think most people realize compared to being available. Like you can be logged into Genesis Cloud, right, and be available, but not be available to take calls. There is a toggle that allows you to go on queue. A lot of this will be covered in the Genesis Cloud um, agent training that we're going to have. Uh, but this piece right here uh, is definitely architect. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a data action to call out and look at a particular queue. And you can kind of see I have a queue ID here. Uh, this, this particular call flow is only going to go to one queue and it's never going to change. So that's why the queue ID is in there. Obviously, if you are uh, looking to do something different and this, it could be any queue, uh, we're, you would change that with a variable. We would probably do a different data action too, so it wouldn't be QID. So what we're looking for is we're getting the QID of the, the call flow or of the queue. Um, the output we're getting is a variable. One, obviously, I just put as flow dot uh, S agent count, S just meaning string, and then flow S dot meaning string again, uh, status. So the agent count and the status. So we're looking at the status of those agents we're looking at the agents in the, the queue and then the status of those agents. If any of those statuses equals, uh, equals, oh, what is it? Let me see. If any of those agent statuses equal uh, on queue, uh, then we are going to take that and route that into, the, uh, into that queue. If not, we're actually gonna take it and force it into voicemail. Saying, you know, some, some prompt saying, we, we aren't available to take your call, please leave a voicemail and we'll return your call as soon as possible. So a lot can be done with, this is just a simple data action. There's much more in-depth data actions that can return multiple uh, outputs to really allow that customization even better. But this is just a good simple one to start with. The hands-on exercise does cover this one. Conditional routing. So this allows you to control call flow based on specific criteria. Uh, using the if action in architect, you can create conditions that evaluate variables such as time of day, caller ID, custom data, customer data, or route calls accordingly. So for this example right here is a decision. This is kind of like an if, but it's it's a decision of is not set or empty. For example, we do a lot of whisper tones. In this one right here, the whisper tone is uh, coming from a data table that we're setting a bunch of different variables, one of them being the task.s whisper. We're looking to see if that field in that data table is filled out. If it is filled out, it's going to follow obviously the no path. It's going to then play what the whisper tone is. Um, this is it's it's referencing a prompt. It's going to play the prompt of the whisper tone, and then go ahead and keep on. Obviously, we have some call logs in there, so if it fails, we're able to see that and kind of troubleshoot that a little bit. If it is empty, it's just going to log that it was empty. It's not going to play anything and then continue on. Uh, looping and timeouts. So looping and timeouts are important. Uh, they uh, help obviously help you manage caller experience and, and ensure smooth call handling. It's a menu component. So it's not a menu. And you can kind of see there's a menu here. Here's some of the looping here that happens. You can number of times to repeat menu. There's also another piece of that. Um, looping can also happen uh, within a reusable task at the starting task. Uh, and, and that will be explained. We'll actually have that demonstration in one of the hands-ons. But just for this this one right here, this module menu is the component for looping. So variables and data actions. So we're again referencing that get number of agents on queue data action. Uh, it's just variables and call flows within Genesis Cloud Architect are essential for managing and manipulating data throughout the call flow process. Data actions in Genesis Cloud are essential for interacting with external systems, such as databases or APIs, to retrieve, update, or manipulate data during call flow execution. So a good experience here, a good reason here is like your CRM system. 
let's say you have Salesforce and you'd like to do a data dip into Salesforce to pull back customer information based on either their Annie that they've called in with, or maybe you want to get the, their date of birth or their, maybe you want to get their, whatever their, their customer number is, maybe they know that. Um, there'll be a different things that you'll set up for that. In this scenario, we did this again. I just highlighted this one again on get number of agents on queue of the different things that you're able to do with this, the different routing you're able to do based on if they're on queue or not. That way, uh, big thing is your customer's not waiting on queue uh, when nobody's there. Or maybe maybe everybody logged off for the day uh, and it was 10 minutes early and they forgot to check that the queue was clear. So variables explained, I am not gonna go through this in depth here. This is, this is really purely for your information. They do play a vital role, obviously. And we see that you're able to then set data based off of data tables, data actions. You're able to define those variables in early on and be able to use those down the line instead of using uh, information that may need to be changed over and over and over again. So the types of variables here, system variables, those are already predefined. Those things you will not have to, you can call at any time, like call.any is the any. That's a predefined variable in Genesis Cloud already. Uh, DNS, that's another one that's also a predefined. User defined, this is where you're defining those, those variables like on the data table or the data action where it was that flow.s agent status, for example. That was one that we defined. Um, you can define pretty much anything you want. You usually have to have task or flow in front of that in order to define it. Um, task. Uh, and the difference between task and flow, task is going to work inside that task. So let's say you make a reusable task. Um, that task will then flow within that. Uh, the flow means that that variable can be called from anywhere in that flow. So working with variables, you can use various components and actions to create, set, and modify them. You can create the variables. You can set and modify. You can, you can use variables and components. All of those is obviously un, pretty much unrestricted. There are a few caveats to that. We may get into that in some of the uh, some of the discussion for the hands-on as we flow through these. You'll see some kind of active troubleshooting just to just to fix those different things. So tips for advanced call flow design: always test. <laughs> uh, can't say that enough. If obviously if the uh, if it is in red, if there's anything that shows up red, you're not going to be able to deploy anyway. So make sure you test in advance prior to deploying. That is usually what you're doing. Um, a lot of what we do is I will create a dev call flow and a production call flow, mimic the two, and then you make all those changes on dev prior to then you know exporting and importing into prod. Uh, again, I think this is the third time this has been mentioned, but use meaningful names for components and variables. Always, always, always use that. It makes it easier for you to walk through things quickly, uh, troubleshoot things quickly, make changes quickly. Always keep them organized, easy to understand. You never know. Let's say, you know, God forbid you leave your job or maybe you're retasked with something else. Someone that comes in could come in, quickly look at this and have a good understanding of how this flows. So conclusion. So a mastery and advanced call flow features obviously is very essential, uh, especially if you want to take this to the next level. Um, you know, getting this advanced call flows under your belt is really good for any organization uh, that you could go apply to or you, that you're working for. If you can make it a more personalized experience, not only for, you know, the architect that's building this or for your guys inside, you know, you, everybody that's working with you, but the customer's calling in and noticing this experience and it's a better experience that maybe they don't want to talk to anybody. They can have self-help. That's an advanced call flow feature. Anything like that that helps the customer experience uh, and their journey helps you help them. So just continue with your journey along here. Keep uh, experimenting with those advanced features. Feel free to continue on doing this. Uh, take as much time as you need to get used to it. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. Look at all the different training information or support information. And we'll see you on module six after the hands.